Well, hello, everyone. Hola, amigos. What is it? Christmas Eve, right? Christmas Eve 2020. Hadn't 2020 been an interesting year? Yikes. Very interesting year. I'm sure all of us would be glad to get it out of the way, right? Fortunately, us as carpet cleaners, we've been very blessed because we're in an industry that's actually essential. And even a lot of us, if you're qualified for it and you're certified for it, uh, and you have an applicator's license more than likely, like I do, you can go ahead and you can take care of doing, you know, uh, disinfecting and things of that nature. Just be careful how you go about doing that. I'm just waiting for my son to share this with more people and some more people to come in here. He's going to get it. But welcome to the pre-agitation tool shootout, baby. We're going to lay it all out on the table, literally. And, you know, and speaking of table, this is a little fold-up table. The legs fold in, and uh, you can just kind of carry it. It's got a little carry handle. You can carry it right inside, keep it inside your truck. Fits in a small spot. A lot of guys like to bring it inside, and they'll grab you know, a cushion or a pillow, throw it up here. That way you start cleaning, and your back ain't hurting from leaning over like this all day long, right? Okay? So... As soon as my son gives me the, the clearance, I'm going to go ahead and break these down right here. And by the way, don't forget, all these tools, everything you see here, I've done all the searching, all the homework, bought them all. And you can go ahead now and decide what works best for your company, your cleaning style, your business model, and of course your budget. So I'm going to break them down. You can decide what's best for you. And since I had, it took a long time to get all this together and a little bit of expense too. But on top of it, I went ahead, I'm going to put in the description a link so you can find every bit of it. That way you don't have to go hunting for this, that, and that, and that. Say, well, what was that he did, talked about? What was this? How did that work? It'll be all right there in there for you and ready to go. All right, son. How are we doing? We're good? Okay, cool. Well, let's get this party started. Literally. <laughs> all right. There's four different tools we're going to be discussing here. Really five, but I really don't want to count it too much, but some people actually pre-agitate with a terry cloth glove or even a towel. Okay, you kind of put those in the same category. Just kind of put it on here. You can do encapsulation with it and rub it down with your arm. Let me tell you what, don't get mighty sore. Listen, as good a shape as mine. <laughs> All right, uh, number two tool. Some guys like to just go ahead and buy some brushes and remember the brushes and all this stuff will be in the links. And they just like to use their drill. And you can adjust the speed of your drill. And you can adjust the pressure on it. And I'm going to show you a demonstration here in a second. I'm also going to uh, have a bonus at the end, breaking down sealers, show you how they work and everything, and also some encapsulation points. Encapsulation is getting really popular for upholstery. And carpet is too, but especially upholstery. Okay, then we're going to go across this tool right here where, guys, look at this. No cord. Cordless. How cool is that, right? So that's really nice to have. Where this one right here have a cord. I'll just turn it on for a second. Most of them, they also, uh, you know, they oscillate. So that's kind of cool too. So you notice how it oscillates. And I'll show you how they work. And then the last tool over here, portable. Chuck them out. Just kidding, portable people. <laughs> you know, they're both just as important. But listen, this piece. So this is an animal right here, if you really think about it. Okay. So I'm going to break them down for you and go through them. I'm going to show you everything that's available for them. This is really important, too, because you want to make sure you're there to not cause problems. You're there to solve problems, right? So when you're dealing with delicate upholsteries, unfortunately, many manufacturers of upholstery and builders and stuff like that are not only just moving towards delicate materials, they're taking synthetics and blending them with it. With, uh, you know, with naturals and delicates. So you might have some cottons, some linens, some rayons, and stuff like that, and that's problematic. But guess what? Chuck them out for them to solve that problem. What did we come out with? Cotton linen shampoo. So there you go, right there. So uh, I'm just going to make it real simple for you. You can actually use a uh, black label for all your synthetics, or you can use Revive if you're a little bit worried about it. This is a great product, by the way. And... You can use this, so basically these two right here for your synthetics, super synthetic, especially microfibers. Bam, hit it with all you got, all right? Not too, not too sure? Go ahead and use your Revive if you want to. It has a great scent, by the way. And you can boost anything if you need to, but you shouldn't have to. If you're really worried about something, 
definitely use some cotton shampoo, all right? Cotton linen shampoo. Last thing you want to do is go in there for a $300 job and buy a $3,000 sofa, right? Yeah, you ain't going to be in business too long. Now, are you? Mm -mm. We're in the business to make money, not give money away. And there's an old saying in the industry, especially in the rug industry. It's not a matter if you're going to buy a rug. It's a matter when you're going to buy a rug. So don't adopt that philosophy into upholstery. All right, so get educated, learn, use the right products, and you won't have any problems. So some of the little attachments you can get with these before I break them down and show them in use. You can see the different brushes that you can get. These brushes, by the way, fit on the Micro Mini by Orbot. And we do sell this unit right here. You can use the terry cloth pads, has a little tool. Use this tool here, pop it apart, and these come right off. See there? Yeah. And you can put different brushes on. Some people use it for tile and grout. They use it inside of showers. Um, generally, the darker the color, generally the darker the color, the more aggressive it is. And you don't want to use something too aggressive on a natural fiber, okay? So definitely keep that in mind. But however, the softest ones in this family here would definitely be the gray. Ah, very soft. I like it. I like it a lot. And then over here, you got your whites over here. So most of the time, I would say you're probably using the white when you're pre-agitating upholstery. But if you're really worried about something being maybe some cottons, some linens, some velvets, go over to your grays, okay? So not only can you put them on there, but you can put them on your drill too, all right? So there you go. So now, you're probably asking, hey, well, Rob, which tool is the best? Well, I don't think there is a best tool. I think you need to decide what fits you the best. That's what counts. You know, uh, sometimes there's things that I don't sell, and people call me up and say, Rob, uh, is this tool, this tool, this tool, this tool in the same family? Which one's better? And I, I take the time and ascertain what fits their business model, their cleaning style, and their budget the best. And then I'll direct them either to us if we have it. Great. Thanks for supporting a family business. We truly appreciate it. Or I'll even direct them to the competitors. I don't mind. Because I believe in the law of reciprocity. I believe if I help you become successful, you'll help me become successful. So that's the key to success. All right, so now let's take a minute and let's go ahead and I'm going to show you some of the ways people pre-agitate upholstery. So basically when you come in, the first thing you want to do when you're, when you're cleaning upholstery is you want to take your time and vacuum it real well, right? Okay? So for video's sake, let's say we've already vacuumed it really well. All right, so you go inside, you vacuum it really well. Suppose it's got some hair. Well, some people like these little rubber brushes, or you can get these blocks and stuff like that. Some people don't like these, but you can take the time, you know, and kind of work the hair off of there and get it out of there and vacuum it as well as possible. Another brush, which will not remove hair, but it will help you agitate. A lot of guys just like to use a brush. Hey, that's all you want? Knock yourself out. What I do like about this, though, I like this for post-grooming. And this is a horsehair brush, by the way. So. Suppose you've got a microfiber or some delicate or especially some velvets, okay? You can leave those lines in there. You can't get those lines out. It's almost like cleaning your hair, washing your hair, and you, don't, and you don't style your hair. It's kind of stuck that way. Or you got a cow, like the next day you wake up, it's sticking up, ping, right? Ping, you try to lay it down, it don't go back, right? You have to rewash it, redo everything. So after you do some delicates especially, or actually any upholstery, take a brush, go over top of it, just take a second, and brush everything out. All right, it only takes a second. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? So there you go. All right, I think we're gonna get to agitating here in a second. My number one agitation tool is me agitating my wife. <laughs> ah, can't imagine that. Oh, and, and don't forget, at the end of this right here, I'm going to break down uh, different sealers, protectors, and I'm going to break down different encapsulants so I can show you how encapsulants work because like I said early on, encapsulants have become very popular in this day and time and rightfully so, they really do have a nice place. I always look at encapping mostly as an interim cleaner, okay? So in other words, every so many cleanings, you can use an encapsulant if it's lightly soiled. And then when it's really heavily soiled, instead of using VLM, very low moisture, which is encapsulation, switch over to hot water extraction, HWE, and go ahead and give it a good deep cleaning. And of course, the upholstery makes a big difference also. And never trust the labels that are on upholstery. Okay, they lie to you because it's really just the material that's inside, not on the outside. Go ahead and find out from the customer, find out where it's made, or go ahead and do yourself a little burn test or a little uh, 
color or test on the back of an inconspicuous area. Maybe fold up a flap. Let me see if you can see this, son. Kind of lift up a flap. Maybe treat the back of it like right in here. Do a little test sample maybe while you're cleaning the carpets, right? See how it dries out for you. And speaking of drying out, I love to keep a fan on hand. That's really important. Get the upholstery dry as fast as possible. And if I'm cleaning the carpets, I like to clean the upholstery first and then clean uh, the carpets afterwards. Because that way, by the end of the job, it's dry and I know how it's going to look. So does the customer. So if there's a problem, I can address it right then and there. Yeah, I'm the consummate professional. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Uh, I, I think it's handy to have a two-quart sprayer on hand, 32-ounce sprayer. This is kind of cool if you want to apply a little bit of protector on something. I'm going to get into that a little further. I'm also going to show you with some fruit drink, uh, some different samples of some paper towels, some cardboard, and some business cards, and show you how the protectors and the sealers work. However, the main course of this video right here is the pre-agitation tool shootout. All right? So let's get, let's get, let's get into the battle, right? Let's start off first with the, with the brush on a drill. To me, if you've got a good drill, that's kind of cool. But you know what? The homeowner's probably thinking, I could use a drill myself. So that's something to think about. Oh, one more thing, too. You can use all these on stairs also. So that's kind of nifty. You know, if you want to pre-agitate your stairs, especially this bad boy over here. All right? Really, any of them could be used for stairs. What pre-agitation does is it's basically getting your surfactant spread out and your solvents and your different cleaners and it's, it gets in between, the easiest way I can say it, it gets in between the fiber and the soil. So that way when you come back and rinse, it comes right on off. And if you don't get all your detergent out, you don't get all the soil out, what happens? The upholstery looks dull and it looks more dull as time goes on. So if you cleaned it and then you, you're drying it and then you're going to clean the carpet, you come back, it should be brighter. All right? Hey, one more nifty little tip. I like having an air mover with the plugs on the front. That way if you are using a tool that has to be plugged in, you just plug it right into it and move it right around your upholstery. Hey, one guy, Trevor Bennett, uh -huh. sends us and is asking, what kind of tea are you drinking, Rob? What kind of tea? Mexican tea. That's what it is, Mexican tea. <laughs> I know we covered it up a little bit, but uh, you know, with uh, the way people are these days, you kind of don't want to show the logos of anything because you upset people so easily. The politically correct world we live in. I want to thank everybody for their support uh, on Truck Mount Forums this year. It's been a rough year, but we've all kind of got together, and uh, I think we've all worked through this, and I think we've all come out pretty successful. Hopefully 2021 is a better year. All right, now back to it. So here we go. Now this is my place. Generally what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down maybe a, uh, you know, we've got the... Uh, what do you call those things? Runners? Shoebie mats. Right, right, the shoebie mats. Hey, we're going to have that in there too, by the way, okay? The shoebie mats. Matter of fact, you see it over there, son, at the door, just a little glance, the shoebie mats. I've got some out back, but I didn't do it for this video. I just wanted to get it together for you guys to see. So if you're working over some floors, like this one right here, go ahead and lay something down. I'm just putting this mat here. It's just easier for me to move around for demonstration purposes. Okay, here we go. So when you're pre-spraying, you want to kind of keep it at a very fine mist. Don't overdo it. And why am I starting out at the arm here for the demonstration and right here? Why is that? Because body oils. You know, most of your dust on your countertops and your tabletops, on here and up here, that's dead skin and body oils that you're exfoliating constantly. So when you're sitting here with your shorts on, hopefully not in your underwear, watching TV, all right? you're getting a bunch of body oils and dead skin and then from the hair up here, all right? So that's why it's handy to have a pre-agitation tool, all right? I'm not a fan of this, but you know, some people are. If it works for them, hey, knock yourself out. You speed it up, it's variable, get up in here. Those are the areas you really wanna pay attention to, all right? I just don't know if the customer's gonna think you're very professional using a drill that they got inside their garage, okay? Maybe, maybe not. That's up to you to decide. All right. Number two is this little wind unit, which will be inside there. However, you're going to have to plug this in. So keep that in mind. You can plug it right into your uh, air mover if you want to. All right. And this oscillates. Basically, this is a detailer polishing tool. 
you can use it for polishing your cars. That's basically what it is. You get these little terry cloth or microfiber. They just stretch, go right over top of the padding. So that's kind of cool because the padding kind of softens it up a little bit, but it also reduces your agitation. So for delicates, it's probably what you want to do. Oh, by the way, before I even use this tool, I'm going to set it here, son. kind of want to show people what some people used to do. This is what we did. You know, remember, I've been cleaning since, you know, the early 80s, right? I always use the terry cloth. That was yep. my, my Yep. This is my son. I saw him do this for the first time. This is the first time I've ever seen it. dun 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 Yep. Just like that. So you start to see the body oils and dead skin that are on there. But that's tedious. It doesn't look as professional. I say you should go out and do it correctly. So here we go now with the wind, which you can hold one hand, work around. But you do have the cords. So keep that in mind. All right? But the cord, not as long as I think it should be, so maybe get like a 10-foot extension cord so you can kind of work towards a sofa, a love seat. And what if you're dealing with a sectional, right? Okay, just pop it on here. And now, look at that. So now I'm pre-agitating, I'm breaking up the body oils, the dead skin, and where you want to pay attention to, not just where the arms, but about where hands go. I think that's really important too, right? Where people put their hands, get around the edge, you know what I think is really cool is app. I know a lot of you guys thinking this is just a pre-agitation tool, but how much how much better would it be if you took the time and go ahead and pre-agitate and then use a fresh one after you're done as a post-agitation tool? So that way you're getting off any excess that you might have missed, whether it's hot water extraction or whether you're doing encapsulation. So that's kind of cool. And concentrate, like I said, where the hair is, where people's body oils, their neck their hair and stuff like that. This will shake you quite a bit. All right? Hmm, not bad. Not bad, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, maybe get your wife. Yeah, work your back or something, right? After swinging that wand all day long. Okay, here's a unique little tool. The little Astro. This is kind of cool. Why is that? Adjustable speeds. All right, we'll start off at one. Oh, look, no cords. How nice is that, right? Speed it up. Oh yeah, it'd be in the description. Goes all the way to six. A little noisy, but guess what? You got the customer's attention. Hey, you're doing something different. I always loved it when women would say, wow, my last cleaner didn't do that. Oh wow, my last cleaner didn't have that. Oh wow, that's unique. Next thing you know, they're on the phone. Hey, guess what? I got a carpet cleaner over here. He's doing some stuff I've never seen before. Oh really, what's his number? I'll take it. All right, so here we go. Here we go, high speed. Now you're working it. Look how cool that is. You can be talking to the customer at the same time, not worrying about the cord, tripping over it. You're looking dumb, right? Yes, ma'am, I got you covered. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yep, yep. Uh-huh. No problem. Yep, because you always want to be what? ABC, right? Always be closing. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, Mr. Jones, this is really turning out nice. It's even turned out better than I thought. You know, when was the last time did you have it protected last time? Or how about this? Mr. Jones, this is really turning out nice. I think you'll be very pleased. Look how bright it is. You know, um, would you like me to replace your sealer and protector while I'm here? Victor said, uh, hey, my wife said I have to watch church. Is that what she said? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, knock yourself out there, Victor. Well, you better start preaching. There you go. Yeah. So there's microfiber right there. You got the microfiber. You can use the microfiber if you want to, or you can pull this right off and throw that on there. Okay, so either way, it's kind of cool. And this has a Velcro piece on it, by the way. Let me pop this off. Hello, Jeremy. We're going to be drinking a little bit later tonight. Yes, sir. We're just getting started. Just getting the party started. Come on. Here we go. This has Velcro on it, so it's a little more tedious to get off. Hear it? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So then you can throw on your terry cloth one if you want to, or if you want to, throw on a little more aggressive pad. It stays right there. Okay. So here we go. Boom. But I like how it oscillates. I think that's kind of cool. I'm getting pre-agitated. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Yep. Nice. This is smooth. I'm going to have to give it credit. This is really smooth, son. I really like this. This is an impressive little tool. I just think it'll look cool to the customer. Look at the lights on there and stuff like that. I know you guys love LED lights. Put them in your trucks like I did, right? Look at that. Man. It's so easy. You know what? There's another thing, too, son. I just want you to know, this is ergonomic, extremely ergonomic. Look at this, a couple fingers. Can't do that hardly with your drill. Can't take your eyes off of it, stuff like that. Can't do it with that little wind tool. This is cool. 
I mean, this is pro. I'm impressed. I really am. If I was on the truck again today, this would be my, this would be my tool of agitation right here. Okay. Now, however, I will say, if I really want to step it up and really look different to the client, way different. Wow. The Orbot Micro Mini. This is the same guys who make the uh, spray board, the life machine, and of course the Vibe. And don't forget, we have Vibes in stock, right, son? Yep. And we sold quite a bit of them because uh, encapsulation become more important, uh, more important. But it's a very versatile tool, so you can use it for hardwoods. You know, one or two hardwood jobs can pay for your life or your um, your Vibe machine, right? So think about that. It's kind of cool. So now if you want to pre-agitate or you want to post-agitate or you want to throw the brushes on there, but remember, you have to use the tool for that. So it's a little more tedious, more time consuming. But I'll tell you what, nothing pre-agitates stairs like this bad boy. This bad boy will go through some stairs. You could throw your green brushes on there and go to town on the stairs. How cool is that, right? So throw stairs, stairs on all the time. That's what, that's what Matt does on the truck, son. He keeps those on, his, on all the time. Okay? Hold on here. Mexican dog. Yep. Yep, can't say the name, but some of you guys should know. I have a Mexican daughter-in-law. A lot of people don't know that. And she's standing right here. She's filming with the second camera. And she's laughing in the background. And uh, she's the one to pick the beer out for me. Very nice choice, Esme. Esmeralda, correct? Uh, Esmeralda. Esmeralda, yeah. Say that again? Esmeralda. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what she, what she said. All right, so here you go. Look at that bad boy. Oh, no, you know what? It's more ergonomic than I thought it was, son. Wow, impressive. Look at that. I'll tell you what, she's going to think she's really getting her upholstery clean now, isn't she? No doubt. Woo! That's beast. You're doing some stairs. you got to get down on it a little bit. Let's suppose I'm on the stairs, Rob, right? So if I'm on the... Let's, let's pretend... Let's pretend this is a set of stairs, okay? What do you have? You have your tread. You have your bull nose. You have your riser. And you have your side caps. Let's go ahead and work this set of stairs over. Imaginary, of course. So, look at that. Now, I'll probably be using the brushes. You know what? This would be kind of cool here for post at, for post uh, post bonding on your stairs. Wow, how cool is that, right? Man, those stairs look great. You know, stairs, many times, they'll brown out before everything else in the whole house does. So, how important is it if you could post bond it? But using your brushes, here we go. We're doing the tread. Now we're working that bull nose. Look how I can get my handle on this. The bull nose is always a problematic. I'm getting the bull nose. Now I'm getting the riser. Yeah. Now I'm getting the side cap. Wow. That's a bad tool. That's a bad mamma jamma right there. I don't know exactly how much it weighs, but I would probably say about 8, 10 pounds, somewhere around that nature right there. Okay? But she's bad. So if you want to post agitate, you want to clean. So remember, uh, you can use this not only for that, but you can also use it for encapsulation. Encapsulation has become very popular now. Now, if you need to test for color fastness, here's a cool little trick on upholstery. Like down that little area right there. Take yourself a towel, right? Take your favorite cleaner, because now you're using it in a concentrate. We're using like two ounces of this to a gallon. I usually put two to two ounces in a, in a two-quart sprayer. Where did I put it? Oh, on the floor here. Yeah. Two ounces in there. That's all you need. Remember, all of our products are extremely concentrated. So sometimes it seems like, oh, well, they cost a couple dollars more. Well, they can make, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 more gallons. Mr. Perkins keeps on asking about the motor scrubber. I know we tried it before in the past, and we had uh -huh. a lot of issues with it. Really? We keep on saying, what do you think of the motor scrubber? What do you think of the motor scrubber? Miguel? I've never had a problem with it. We've been using it for years. Are you talking about this one right here, son? I guess it's a company. Remember they came out one, we were at the expo or something like that. It was, it had some issues with it. And it was I, yeah. Like, must have been a different company. I know one thing. Yeah, it kind of seems like it does all the sales and stuff. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not on our list today. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that tool doesn't hold up. I'm not going to show you anything that doesn't hold up that's not quality. Okay, that's really important. All right, now back to um, testing for color fastness. This is really simple. You just take your favorite product, right? You like this? And notice my finger, son. Now I've got right there. Okay? You see that right there? Right there. This is the way you test. It's real simple. Take it over here to a flap, inconspicuous area, and kind of blot. You can even press if you want to. Press hard if you want to. Move it around a little bit. Oscillate with it, some. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Now, 
No colors. Other okay. Than blue glove underneath yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, no exactly, oh, exactly. Okay. So there you go. So, if you get some color transfer, with uh, if you don't get color transfer, as a concentrated product, you definitely ain't going to get it at two ounces per gallon, right? So there you go. So that makes it really simple. That's the easiest way to go ahead and test it. Boom, shalalaka. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, now let's break down the chemistry because you have to remember, chemistry does your heavy lifting. All right? So if you don't separate the soil from the fiber, then you can sit there and rinse all day long and it's not going to come clean. You really got to have a good product that separates it. You need it to be the strongest product, but yet the safest product. So one thing about us being a family business, when I first started making products, what was in my mind? What was my thought process? Number one, honestly, was I have a son who's here filming right now. I have a grandson who's coming into the industry. I want them breathing the safest and the finest products available on the market. Now, there's some products you don't have a choice. Using a solvent sealer, yeah, it's a little stronger, but as long as you take the proper precautions, it's no problem. But as far as the cleaning agents, I wanted them safe as possible while yet still being as effective and the performance being better than other products out there. So many companies use fillers or they water it down and stuff like that. Ours, like that. Ours are extremely concentrated. They get the job done. They smell great. I'm a big believer in essential oils and things of that nature right there. What, son? Here we go. So let's break down the products again. If you're working on synthetics, especially like microfibers, nothing wrong with using black label. Nothing wrong with it at all. If you want to use it, that's all you have. Uh, now, our, our, our product of choice is Revive. We do love using Revive, but you can use either one of them, so keep that in mind. So, super rat nasty pro, uh, here. Here is fine, but keep in mind, this one right here will definitely handle most delicates out there, and you saw how easy it was to test. So that's a really cool way to test it, all right? Now, what if you get some extremely delicate rayons, linens, cottons, which have a tendency to brown out and cause problems. When products, when things brown out or they don't look as good or they dull out and stuff like that, guess what? A customer's probably not going to call you back. All right? She might not call you back at all. She might call you back do a redo, and that's expensive. So it might cost a few dollars more. People say, well, that's maybe a little bit expensive. No, it's not. What's expensive is redos. Lost clients, that's expensive. That's what costs you a lot of money. So take the time, use the proper products. So if you got the linen and stuff like that, you're good to go. Now, what if we want to switch from hot water extraction? Here we go, hot water extraction over here, and we want to move to encapsulation. Somebody asked a question earlier, and I think this is going to kind of surprise you a little bit. I came out with a product called SuperCap Oxy3, which has a good amount of natural brightener in there. So you can use this, put, put two ounces in here, maybe three ounces if it's really dirty, four ounces if it's a super nasty, throw it in there. Now you can go ahead and spray it, and you can go ahead and encapsulate it. Generally what you want to do, in my opinion, is take the time and um, pre-agitate it first, and then after that, post-bonnet. But a lot of guys will just go through a bunch of bonnets, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to do an encapsulation, take this, spray it on, bonnet it. After it's soiled, grab another one. So it's a good idea to probably have about six of these on hand per sofa, is my, is my thought. Especially if you want to post-bonnet afterwards. All right? for hot water extraction. Okay, all right, now, let's talk about the two different ones we have here. The problem is, is people have fallen in love with their pets so much in this generation. So you have pets inside the home. So they're leaving a lot of dog dander. They're leaving cat and dog urine. Or even if a dog is potty trained, they can still leave traces wherever they're laying and sleeping. And I know my wife, she loves to bring dogs up on the sofa. I hate that, but guess what? She still brings them up there. So anyway, so they get up there. So you have these little dots and these little drops. The problem is hardly no products out there address urine, whether it's in carpet or whether it's on upholstery. So I worked very diligently. It took a long time. It took almost a year for the chemist to come up with a product that has, guess what, inside of it? Unchained. So now we have super cap and chain, unchained, and it turns into a nice crystal, but yet it takes care of all those trace urine products. And you can use your unchained if the pet went. Another little cool trick, which Kevin O'Hull is pretty cool about, is you can take a, like this, generally they'll pee on the cushion, all right? So suppose you got a urine spot right here. Take your unchained, of course, if the fabric can, can take it. If it's not, 
something that's, uh, if it's something very delicate, you want to use our peachy peachy or our citrus lush, right, son? Right. So you saturate it real good. You get a big plastic bag, take your vacuum cleaner, suck it out, pull all that out of there, and it'll flatten right out and it'll spread it everywhere. The key is, when you're taking care of urine, is to come into contact with the urine molecule. Urine goes in as an acid, but it turns into an alkaline salt in 24 to 48 hours. And that salt will remain there, and every time the humidity goes up, like today, it'll off gas on you. And nobody wants to be sitting on their sofa and say, hey honey, you smell pee? <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't want no pee on the carpet. Your best just not to complain. Your best just, if you're a carpet cleaner, take time and go ahead and clean it. So there you have it right there. That takes care of our pre-agitation. It takes care of our products. So like I said, the bonuses would be, first of all, the machines and equipment. Remember, it's all inside of the, um, in the description. That's important. Now, here's the, the last part of the bonus is, this is kind of cool because I keep getting a lot of questions asked, hey Rob, what's the best way to apply sealers? Can you tell me a little more about sealers? Well, there's two different types of sealers and protectors. There's water-based, and our Protect-All is our water-based product. And then you have, I'm going to move this over here some for a second. I'll put these together so you can kind of see it. Then we have our solvent sealer. All right. So here you have a water-based product, which is concentrated. You can add water to it. This is an RTU. What does RTU stand for? Ready to use. Okay. So it's ready to be sprayed on. Now, if you want to, you can put it into a little, quart, a little spray bottle like this. A lot of people think, well, you just got to douse it. You don't have to douse it. It doesn't take much at all. I took and I sprayed some on here. Well, actually, this one non-treated because it's not written on. And this one is treated. I'm going to show you in a minute how it repels. We haven't even tested it yet. All right, so you're going to see. And then I did it to paper towels. I know a lot of you guys like to take the time and sometimes put it on business cards. So I went ahead and treated one business card and not the other card. They look the same. I almost can't remember. We should have put initial on it, right, Ambassador? That's okay. We'll know when we put the product on there, right? We're going to put some juice on there. No, no, you're fine, because I want to talk about this for a minute first. All right, so let's talk about sealers. Um, a solvent sealer can cover just about everything. Tile, grout, stone, leather, shoes, clothes, sofas, you know, you name it. It, it can go ahead and seal it, okay, because it's a solvent protector. It has a little bit more of an odor to it. So what's the key to keeping the odor down? It's really simple, you guys. You're overusing it for the most part. I like to keep these for the guys. Uh, I just have water in here, just kind of giving you the idea. A little four ounce container like this with a flip top on it. And you can go ahead and you can squirt this if you want to. Right out on the tile, generally if you're doing a kitchen, this will cover a whole kitchen. Then take the time, get yourself your microfiber mop, and go right over top of it. That's simple. Microfiber mop that bad boy. Give it a nice, good little flush on it, okay? Get it nice and even, especially if you're working with natural stone. I like how this twists and turns. And this one right here, by the way, push a button, and product will come out. So that's kind of cool. So if you want some extra product, you don't feel like you got good coverage, put some in there. Why waste the product? You don't really need as much as you think you do. Now, let's suppose you're dealing with ceramic or porcelain, right? Now, those right there, we know that really they're impervious or they're non-porous for the most part. So you're really only taking care of the grout lines. Well, what can you do? Go ahead and take your sprayer. I like to just do it this way. I think this is a cool little tip here. Don't sit there and pump the living daylights out of it, okay? Don't put it on a very, very fine mist. Put it on a, a stream. Just pump it once or twice. Go on, the cart, go on the floor on your tile and go horizontal east to west, horizontal north to south. Just run a little stream. That's how I use Grout Master. I take the time with Grout Master. Just run right down there. Then I'll take and spray the Grout Master all over. Wait 10 minutes. I'll, now, of course, I like to bring in a CRB because I like to do the dog and pony show. You know, I want customers to see they can't just get the product themselves, hit it, mop it up, and it looks new. We basically almost can with Grout Master, but we don't want the customers to know that now, do we? Yeah, that's our little secret. All right, so now let's suppose you want to treat the furniture, right? Use a two quarts, you can use a two quart sprayer, or you can go ahead and use a two gallon or a one gallon, however much you need, but you don't need much. And don't spray it way up in the air like this. Of course, you're going to be breathing it more, right? So if you want to use a little mask, oops, I'm going to mess up my microphone there. How about that, son? Okay, so if you want to use a little mask, that's cool. Throw in a mask, you can do that if you want to. Especially in this day and time, people don't care if you wear a mask now, do they? 
uh, last year or so, you're wearing a mask and saying, hey, that guy's doing something wrong out there. You know what I mean? Now, they're welcoming the mask. All right, so you put your nice little coat on it, put yourself a nice little coat, and then after that, if you want to, if you want to spread it out nice and even, what happened to my, what happened to my glove, Esme? You move it? Oh, here it is. Take your little glove if you want to. This is kind of cool. You could put this inside of a bucket afterwards, right? Let's suppose you sprayed it down and use big droplets, all right? You don't need a fine mist. Use big droplets. If you want a little fine mist for an area that you're concerned about, for maybe in here, that's cool. Why is that? Because those are your high, I don't call high traffic areas, but they're high oil areas. Your high dead skin body oils and stuff like that, right? So that's kind of cool to have that on hand. Now, what you can do is take this right here and maybe have a, a little bucket or something, maybe a little half gallon bucket. Dip this in, squeeze out all the excess of, of the uh, protector, whichever one you're using, right? Put it on your hand here and now smoothly go over the whole thing. So now you've done kind of spread it out evenly, nice and evenly across the whole unit right there. And what's that all going to do for you? It's going to make you look like a hero. But if you're going to sell it, generally you're selling it ahead of time or you're selling it during the job. I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I'm doing upholstery, you can see a night and day difference. So I want to show that customer that dramatic difference. So I'll, after maybe I'm going through a, a, a cushion. I've got half of it nice and clean and bright. The other side looks soiled. I'll go get the customer and I'll say, Mrs. Jones, by the way, I wanted to show you something. You bring her in there and you show her, look at the differences. Now. Wow, you know what? This is really going to add a lot of life to this and it probably has some protector on it. Would you like me to replace it while I'm here? And you go quiet. Why do you go quiet? Give her time to register it. Yeah, well, I guess I would. Yeah, why not, why not protect your furnaces and make them last longer? And you can kind of do a couple little demonstrations if you want to. If you have a little spray bottle like this, is all I did, is I misted someone to here. And this should be the side that's not treated. Put some fruit juice in there. All right, let's see if I'm correct. Which one's which here? Give it a second. Let that sit there. Let's take this one. And you kind of see the beading up there. See how it's beading all up? Isn't that cool? Let you see it there too, Esme? Beading up. Where that one is starting to soak in. See it starting to soak in? That's the difference. Now let's take and do the same thing on a paper towel and a piece of cardboard. So I just misted this piece of cardboard, not this one. Here's one that I didn't treat. And shake off the excess. There you go. How's that? Okay. So you can see it's all on there. I'll take a towel, wipe it off. Yeah, she's wet. And you know what happens to cardboard, right? It gets ruined pretty easy. Now let's take this piece of cardboard here that I treated and sprayed earlier. And look at it. See how it's beating up on there? Isn't that cool? See the bead on it? And it wants to run right off, and that's what you can show the customer. And you can take a uh, towel, wipe it right off. Look at that. Boom, shalalaka. Yeah, isn't that cool right there? So that's, that's very important. So notice I put on there, Rob saw a sealer. Yeah. You know, when I made my sealer, everybody said, Rob, what's taking you so long to make a sealer? It's because I ordered everybody else's sealer, brought it in, and I told my chemist, I said, look, it has to outperform. It has to last longer, and it has to protect better than all the competitors. So I kept testing and kept testing. You know what's a killer to sealer? Is UV lights. So I put it up under UV light and I let it go, put it in the sunshine back in the back, and ours lasted the longest by far. So how cool is that? Now, let's take something even more delicate. Let's move over to paper towels. Here we go, paper towel. Paper towels are known for what? Absorbency, right? Okay, now, I'm doing this live video, so <laughs> we didn't test this paper towel ahead of time that we did. You can kind of see this and there. So let's hope it works, right? Because I want to put one little mist on it, so we'll see how it holds up. Now, and I had Esme take and just fan it a little bit to dry it. So I don't even know exactly how dry it is, but hopefully it's dry. Here we go. So here we, paper towel, excuse me. It's hard to tell the difference these days. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, there you go. Cool, check that out. Can you see it beating up, son? Yeah. Watch it roll. What's that water roll? Check that out. Isn't that cool? So show the customer that. It's rolling back and forth, beating up and rolling. Yeah, it's a magic trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Wipe that excess off. 
Boom. All right, so it's looking great. Let that sit there for a minute. And I want to show you this. Let's see if this wipes off. Wipe this off. And you kind of see, I don't really have much red in there, but you kind of see how it went into there, son? Okay, I'll let it sit for a while. And then I'll let this one sit for a while. I probably should have put a couple of coats on it. All right. Let's see if I can get this thing to beat up here. There we go. Can you see it moving around? Yeah, it's a Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, there you go. Now you okay. All right. So, boom. That's simple. Um, what else we got here? I think that's it. That covers them all, right? Yeah. Just remember you have the water-based. You have your solvent sealer. And either one of those are a good choice. Might want to charge a little more extra for this. Maybe give the customer the choice which one she wants to use. But be prepared ahead of time. You want to take your business cards, spray them down ahead of time. Some guys will actually take and drop them into a sealer like this, maybe halfway, and then pull them out and hang them up to dry, like with clothespins. Just let them dry for a while. It's better to use your own business card. I know there's some major name protectors out there. They'll sell you theirs or give you some. But maybe use your own business card, because why? Why do you want to brand them when you can brand yourself? All right, so if I'm doing it, let me grab a card over here real quick. Stay right there. There you go. If I'm going to be branding, I'm going to be branding that guy right there. Mm -hmm. And I hope this is the one we treated. I'm about to find out. <laughs> there we go. We treated a few of them. Yes, it looks like it's all. There we go. Cool. Okay, good. See how it's all beaded up there? sitting on the top. Now I just sprayed this, but really I think it'd be better if we just dipped it in, just so you know, okay? Just wipe it off. There you go. Can't see nothing on there. All right, so that's cool. So then go into the paper. Now, so what you could do is you dip this in some Kool-Aid. Have a, uh, dip it into your sealer first, all right? Hang them up, let them dry. These are great sales techniques. And then after they dried out, more than what we let ours dry out, how long we let ours dry out for like, Gosh, right before we started here. All right, so I don't think it's fully cured, but it's still holding up fantastic. But I'd like to give it maybe the next day. Take them with you the next day, dip it now, and maybe have a little cup of some uh, Kool-Aid or something of that nature, some type of fruit punch. All right, dip it in there, dip the whole thing, pull it out. It'll beat off on one side, and it'll go into the other side. So that makes you look pro, and you say, oh, wow, that's how I'd like to have my upholstery. That's how I'd like to have my carpet. And then they're going to see your business card, okay? There you have it. So there you go. That covers everything. Was there any questions, son, that people had? You could keep a little eyedropper like this if you want to, like I did. Okay, if you got any questions, come on and ask them before I end this video right here. I keep this eyedropper. You might want to mark it, but I just keep some. Yeah, it doesn't mark it. Yeah, I just keep some fruit punch or something inside there. Because if you're trying to get rid of red eyes and you're adding red, <laughs> it might not work to your advantage. Okay? And whatever you do, if you got protector, sealer and stuff like that, mark your bottles. We just made these ahead of time. But mark them, label them. We have a, a labeler back in the back. We'll just put a label on them and it's good to go. So there you have it. There's the pre-agitation tool battle shootout, whatever you want to call it. But you can kind of see the differences in the tools. You have your drill, you have your little wind polisher, you have your Astro, and you have your Micro Mini. Then you have your different attachments. You have your brushes, you have your bonnets, you have your microfibers, and you even have more uh, aggressive tools. You have a horsehair brush, okay, for post, for post, for doing your post grooming. I think that's important. Something to get the hair and threads out ahead of time. Oh, I'm not sure, but Justin, I, what's the proper way to apply solvent sealer on the upholstery itself? Well, the way I just showed you right there, if it was me personally, I'd probably use a two quart sprayer. All right, and I'd go ahead and put a nice little fine mist on it. And then if you want to, just in those high areas, put a little extra sun, kind of like that, in the high oil areas, the high oil touch points. Think about the way you sit on sofas and stuff like that. Put it on the high areas. If you want to, you can take the time, use a little hand bonnet, and smooth it out across the whole thing if you want to. Andre says, Trey has some of the best hair in the industry. Yes, he does. I used to have it. He had not seen Micah's hair yet, has he? No. Uh, My grandson's hair is ridiculous. That's how I used, mine used to be. I miss it. Yeah, I miss my hair. Mm -hmm. um, I'm perm. pretty sure. <laughs> I ain't got no perm. 
This okay. comes with a, an extra battery, so you can keep one charging all the time. I think that's important. The last thing you want to do is get in there and start agitating, and the battery dies. So you just pull it out. Oh, it's very simple, Rob. Check this out. It just pulls out like that. Slides right in. Cool. Yeah. Well, it is a shootout. Bang, bang. <laughs> How do you like me now? How do you like me now? Oh, yeah. It's got, I like the way this thing has a little, um, little hand grip on this, too. See this here? So if you want to hold it with two hands, you want to work it in a little bit. Hey, polish up your van at the end of the day, too, right? Okay. Image is everything. Shane's asking, I may have missed it, but when, when would I use Protect All and one and would... Uh, and what, uh, and what would your go-to be for solvent killing? So when would you use either one? Well, okay, okay. all right. Protected. Whatever you, if you got extremely delicate, you definitely got to go solvent. You really don't have a choice, okay? If you're dealing with delicates, whether it's cottons, whether it's linens, rayons, and blends, and if you're in doubt, definitely use it. It's going to be the better product. Think about that. You're, see, you're going to get more life out of it. Where the water-based... Um, Think, uh, think about it this way. People say, well, this makes it soil proof. You know, you know the big brand names, which I'm not going to mention the two big names in the industry uh, who make protectors, they say, they don't, you, don't, you notice they never say stain proof. They never say soil proof. What do they say? Stain resistant. They say soil resistant. So what it's basically doing is buying you some time. This is going to buy you a little bit of time to get the stain up or the urine up and stuff like that. All right, and urine's probably going to permeate the water base. At least it's going to permeate it a whole lot faster than the solvent. So if they have pets, they have delicates, go with the solvent. The solvent is definitely the better product. And if you're doing tile and grout and stone, you almost don't have a choice to use this, but this also. What concerns do I have for applying a solvent protector in the house? Well, I think the concern is that you know, let, uh, set the expectation level with the customer. Let her know, Mrs. Jones. This is basically like a solvent, so it has a little bit of solvent in it. So it's going to have a little bit of odor. It's probably going to last us for a little bit of time. All right, but it'll pass. I'll put an air mover on it. We'll crack a window. It'll pass. All right, because all you're basically doing is, is it, it's releasing a little bit of the solvency, but it's leaving behind the protector. All right, so that's what it does. It's just a drying and a flash, a flash point. So as soon as that's gone, now it's up to you, as the professional, to keep the odors down. How easy it is to take and just take a little squirt bottle if you want to get a. Uh, ketchup bottles. Some of the guys use ketchup bottles. Just kind of go like this. You know, just S shape, go to the floor, put that in your kitchen, take your microfiber mop, and go across it. It's that simple. All right? If you're working with upholstery. Does the fabric get crunchy with the solvent? No, it does, not, uh, it does not change the consistency whatsoever. Actually, both of them don't. As long as you follow the instructions, even on the water base. Some people will take say, oh, well, more is better. More is not better. Okay? It is just the right amount in there. So follow the instructions. That makes a big difference. Solvent cell, it does not change it. You know, here. There you go. I just wetted both of them down. Which one of them looks more natural? They both look exactly the same, right, at, at the start. But this one got wet. This one didn't. All right? So it kept its consistency. The same thing. Look at this here. Rob solvent sealer? No solvent sealer. Boom. Look how that one, I don't know if you see this one. Look a little close. Can you see how that crinkled? You see how the paper crinkled? I can see it. I don't know if it'll come up on the camera, but it crinkled. Vaguely, yeah. yeah, it crinkled. Where this one didn't crinkle. It's nice and smooth. So that's the difference right there. I just got to get it in the right light. You kind of see how it's doing. Kind of like a floor does. That's why you never want to get like an engineer floor wet. You know what I'm talking about? A laminate floor and stuff like that. If it stays wet too long, what happens on a laminate floor? And that's what's nice about the vibe. You want to keep the moisture as low as possible. Because if not, It'll start to crinkle on you, and it'll even start to buckle on you. And you'll be buying a new floor. You don't want to do that now, do you? All right. Any other questions, guys? Before I go home, go out and take the wife out to dinner? I think that's about it. We'll wrap it up. Let me just review everything real quick some before we do that. Okay. I'm going to break everything down one final time. Okay. The least expensive and the simplest to use, probably, is a drill. You just buy these brushes. Look at our description, you get the brushes, you get softer ones, and you can even get some pads with them too. So let you know they're available, look inside down there. Or you can move over to a polisher, remember, where this here right here is cordless, this has to have a cord. If you're going to have a cord, use your air mover, okay, because it's got a plug on, the, on and you want to get your pulse to dry as fast as possible. 
Right, you can pre-agitate with a, with a horsehair brush, especially delicates, don't use regular brushes. Or you can move something like the Astro, where you can remove, it's got the Velcro on it. Man, that's some good Velcro, that's good. You can pre-agitate with that, or you can go ahead and put on a cotton bonnet. You can go ahead and use it for, uh, maybe one for hot water extraction, use this for hot water extraction, or you can go ahead and use these bonnets right here for encapsulation. It's up to you. All right, so there you go. And then remember, the brush colors make a big difference. These gray are extremely soft. I mean, man, I mean, they're just baby soft, right? But this one right here, yeah, it's a little rougher. And this one right here, mm-hmm. I think they even make a black one, but I don't recommend the blacks because I'm afraid if, you, if I recommend the black ones, you guys will go out and mess up some fine upholstery, and we don't want to do that, okay? All right, and then last but not least, the other tool is the Micro Mini. Just remember, though, you have to have something like this. It has a cord versus being cordless. All right, that one's cordless, so that's kind of nice. And I, you know, and this one right here. But if you're doing stairs and you really want to make an impact with a customer, this is probably the best tool to use. If you want convenience and you want ease of use, it's probably going to be this unit right here. All right, it's not even something that I sell, but I really like it. I just think it just has a good It'll feel. It looks cool. It. Yes, it will be in there for the link for the description, so we appreciate that. And. And then when it comes to uh, uh, um, chemistry, you want to make sure that you're using something for maybe some microfiber. Remember, microfiber is nothing but like polyester. That's all it is. So hit it, with, hit it and get it, man. Hit it strong. Don't be afraid. And you know what? Uh, I forgot to bring this out some, but ultimate fiber rinse, you really want to drop the pH on uh, especially fine fabrics, maybe all of them, because it'll definitely help soften it up. So, some... Uh, Ultimate Fiber Rinse will really help do that. It has a nice scent to it, too, on top of it. So uh, your Rat Nasties and your uh, Synthetics, you can hit it with this or hit it with this. This has always been our go-to because it really smells so good, too. They both do. This has a citrus salmon smell. This has our patented Sweet Breeze smell to it. Now, if it's a delicate and you're really worried about it, linen, cotton, hit it with this. Okay, there you go. Now, if you're doing upholstery and you're going to be encapsulating, you have two choices. You have here, you have your super cap oxy, and then you have your super cap unchained. They got pets, don't shortcut them. Use the super cap when unchained, all right? It'll smell great, it'll look great, and it'll get rid of those uh, urine molecules and make it really smell good. And uh, remember, this has three times the oxy. If you're doing carpets and commercial, a lot of people like using this. I still, this is almost my go-to almost all the time. That's just me. If I was on a truck, that's probably all I'd be using. Now, when it comes to protectors, remember there's a water-based, which is dilutable. And then you have your solvent base, which is RTU, which is ready to use. It's good to go. There you have it. I think it's handy to have a two-quart sprayer. I think it's handy to take the time and pre-treat either some uh, pieces of uh, fabric or maybe pieces of carpet. Or if you want to make it fabric, that's cool, or carpet. Or you can take something that's really delicate, something like this, right? Paper towels. Or you can take some cardboard and write on it that you treated it and you haven't treated it and let the customer see how it beads up and... I can really see how that's crinkling. It's even getting worse. If I wiped it off, imagine if I didn't wipe that off. You know, you know what paper does. It just kind of falls apart. If I didn't wipe it off, it probably would have been a whole lot worse, right? Or you can dip your business cards. I like to dip my business cards. You can dip it halfway in, hang it up with a clothes hanger or a little uh, chip clip or something like that, and let them dry, only treating half of it. Go to the kitchen sink. Oh, Mr. Jones, let me show you how our sealer works. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Go over there. Run the water over it. One half will fall apart and tear up. The other half stays right together. How cool is that? Uh, have an air mover. I think it's important to have an air mover when it dries as fast as possible. A good sprayer. Remember, if you're treating, I'm going to do a full video, not just on clear seal, but I'm also going to be doing one in the very near future. I'm going to go through all the sealers, cleaning some tile and grout and stone, and I'm also going to be doing color sealing. So watch out for that. We really, have a, we really worked hard on a fantastic color seal line that holds up and doesn't fall apart. I said, the biggest problem in color seal is what? You go back and clean it again, and the stuff peels up on you. This won't peel up on you. I think it's also handy to have a microfiber mop. Every time you clean tile, grout, and stone, I'm a big believer, as soon as you get done, suppose you use grout master, you cleaned it, take a minute and do a microfiber mop. If you want to, keep some unchained inside a bottle like this, or your protector if you're sealing it, mist it down, go right over top of it. So you can mist it right on here, or if you're using something like this, you can fill it up with protector, and you've already missed it down what you wanted. If you see some areas that look don't look like you're getting good at coverage, push the button, and then work it right over top of it. 
Boom. There you go. That covers everything. That really does complete the whole pre-agitation, furniture, tool, shootout. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Say that three times as fast as you can. Ain't happening today. Not on Christmas Eve. Anyway, that's everything right there. If you have any more questions, feel free to go ahead and look at them, um, post them up. I'll be glad to answer your questions. And if you don't mind, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really does help. If you give us a like, that helps too. And it motivates me to want to do more. Making even a comment even goes further. If you just give me some, we all love affirmation, right? If you just let me know, hey, look, Rob, I love this video. It's good. It really helped me. And maybe what you'd like to see in the future. That really helps too. So go in there, subscribe to our channel. Uh, go to truckmountforums.com. We have over 2 million posts there. You can read all kinds of information about upholstery, carpets, tile, grout, um, water damage, hardwood floors, you name it, everything. If you need something fast and on the point, go to Truck Mount uh, Forums Cleaning Professionals, right, son? You know what's called? On our Facebook channel. And like and subscribe to our fan page on Truck Mount Forums, also our Instagram. And we've got something else new coming in the future, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. We'll kind of keep that under the lid. But we got something really cool coming for next year. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Appreciate everything. Have yourself a great day, the great rest of the year, and I hope 2021 is even a better year than it's been for all of us. Thanks a lot.